What is going on everybody? In this video, what we're gonna be doing is making another calculator. Now, maybe you've seen the old video series, the production quality in those videos really wasn't there. We've definitely gotten a few upgrades in the past few months, so I figured I'd remake the videos. Now, this is what we're gonna be making in this video series. It looks pretty similar to the last one. There's a few design changes, and again, we can do our basic functions like nine times nine gives us 81. If we clear this to a five plus one, we should get a six. And we can also work with decimal values as well. So if we did like a 5.5 times that by, I don't know, two, and we should get 11, which we do. But where this really starts to differ from the last calculator is when we rotate the screen. So if we take this, rotate it, we're presented with a lot more functions that we could work with. We have our trig functions, the inverse trig functions, the log, natural log, our square root, and a few constants. And one thing that I did add to this calculator that I think is a little cool is this prime number button down here. So if you click this, we can throw in a number into this function and it'll determine whether or not the number is prime. So if we place in a seven, which is a prime number, it'll return one, letting us know that we have a prime number. Now, if we put in a number that isn't prime, so if we put in 57, it'll return a zero because 57 isn't prime. I know it's kind of weird. It's like my least favorite number because I feel like it should be prime. But if we did a 19 times three, we get 57. So if this seems like something that you'd like to make, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I upload the next video in this series. Okay, so all I did to get started was create a new project. If you're wondering how you can do that, come over to the far left in the top toolbar, click File, come down to New, New Project, and then all you have to do is click Empty Activity, come down to Next, fill out these fields here. I always leave this as Marshmallow, and then click Finish. Oh, I just created a new project. Too late now. So once you create the new project, you should be presented with two files, your mainactivity.java file along with the activity main.xml file. The XML file is what your user is going to see, and the Java file is what's going to be running in the background. So if we come over to the activity main.xml file, we can start setting up our calculator layout. So the first thing that I want to do is delete this hello world text, and then we're going to drag in a few views. Now, what are views? These are things that the user actually interacts with. So they're like buttons, maybe an input field, or maybe just text that's displaying information for the user. So the first view that I would like to place in onto our canvas is a text view. All this view does is display text to the user. To add this in, if we come over to the far left, come into the palette section, you can either be in the text section or the comments section, but you're looking for this text view option right here. Click that, drag it onto our canvas, and you should have a text view there. Now, if we come over to the far left again, come just a little bit below our palette, you'll see the component tree. You'll notice that we have a red circle with an exclamation point next to our view. So if we hover over this, you could see that we get a warning letting us know that it's not constrained to anything. So what does this mean? When we run our app, the view is just gonna snap to the top left-hand corner and it's just gonna stay there. It's not gonna be right where we placed it. So to fix this error, what we have to do is come over to our view and you'll see these bubbles placed all around it. If we come up to the top bubble, click it, an arrow should appear out of the bubble and I'm gonna drag this to the top of our canvas. And then I'm gonna click the far right bubble. Again, an arrow should pop out of this and I'm gonna drag it over to the far right. Now, what is this view going to do? If you remember, on our calculator, if we typed in something like 9 times 9 and we hit enter, we get our answer here, but the equation is also displayed to us. So that's what this text view is going to be responsible for, displaying the 9 times 9 or whatever the previous equation was. So the next thing that we need is the input field. So the spot where the user actually types in the expression they want to evaluate. So to do this, we could come over to the far left in the palette section again, come down to text, and you're looking for this plain text view right here. It's an edit text, and it allows users to type in information. So if we drag this onto our canvas, we can give it left and right constraints by clicking our bubbles, dragging over to the far left and the far right, and then I'm not gonna constrain anything to the top or bottom just yet. But for our text view in the top right-hand corner, if we click the bottom bubble, I'm gonna drag this to the top of our edit text. Now, the next thing we're going to have to add in is a container for our buttons. This container, I'm just going to make this a constraint layout. So again, if we come back over to our palette, come down to layouts, we're looking for this first option here, constraint layout. Click this, drag it in, and you can't really see anything because it's just a container. It doesn't display anything to the user. But what we need to do is populate this with all of our buttons. So how many buttons do we need? It looks like we need 20 buttons. Yeah, that looks right. I think 20 buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead, drag in 20 buttons. 
So if I move that out of the way, come back over to the palette, you're looking for this button section here, or you could find it in the comment section. And all we're gonna do is click this button and drag it just below our constraint layout. Notice I'm not placing this on the actual canvas, I'm in our component tree, and I'm placing it within our constraint layout. But if you do come over to the canvas, you could see that a button has been placed in the top left hand corner. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing, but I'm gonna drag in 20 buttons. So I'll be back. Okay, so now that I got all 20 buttons in, what we need to do now is add constraints to each of our buttons. Because if you notice, in our component tree, we have a ton of warnings and they're all the same thing. We don't have any constraints for our views. So to add these constraints, we're gonna do it in a specific way. So this is gonna be our delete button. So if I just drag over our calculator, this could be like our reference. So this is gonna be our delete button right here. This is gonna be our clear button. So what we wanna do is take our clear button and constrain it to the far left of our parent, which happens to be a constraint layout, the container that's holding all of our buttons. So we're gonna drag that over to the far left and we're gonna do the same for all the buttons below it. So I'm gonna drag these over to the far left, but I'm not gonna do the same thing for this bottom button here. This bottom button is gonna represent the zero and it needs to span the entire width of this button along with this button. So now for the zero button, what we wanna do is instead of dragging over to the far left, we wanna drag it up to the middle of this button here and it should give you a few options. Now we want this first option here, constraint the start of the zero button to the start of the button above it. So this first option here, start to start, and then what we wanna do is take the far right hand side of our zero button to this button right here. And this time we're gonna go end to end. So what this is gonna allow us to do is take that button and make it so the width of it spans the entire width of the two buttons above it. So now that we have those far left buttons constrained, what we need to do now is take this button, constrain it to the far left of this one here. And we're gonna do the same thing for the buttons below it. And then again, we're just gonna go through all these other buttons and take the far left position and connect it to the button that's next to it. So I'll be back after I get this done. Okay, so now that all of our buttons have a left constraint, let's start constraining them to the top. So let's start with our clear button. What we want is this button to be constrained to the bottom of our delete button. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna take this row, do the same exact thing, and they should all start lining up. And then for the remaining buttons, what we're gonna do is take the topmost part constraint for these buttons and constrain them to the bottom part of the buttons above them. So just like this. So I'm gonna go through for the rest of our buttons and do the same exact thing. So I'll be back after this. Okay, so now that we have all the constraints for our 19 buttons, we need to finish up the delete button. It doesn't have any constraints. So we're gonna take the leftmost part of the delete button, constrain it to the start of the button below it. We could drag this over to line them up a little bit. And then we're gonna take the end of the delete button and align it to the end of the button below it. And then finally, what we're gonna do is take the topmost part of our delete button and constrain it to the top of our constraint layout. So that was probably the most difficult part of this entire tutorial. But now that we have that done, let's fix our zero button because you'll notice that it's not spanning the width of the two buttons above it, these two right here. So if we click this button here, this should be our zero button. If we come over to the far right in our attributes panel, scroll down until you see this little section here that says layout. And you'll notice we have this little square with a bunch of dots around it. You wanna make sure all the dots say zero and you wanna make sure that this middle section here, so if you hover over it, these buttons should turn blue. Click this and make sure that it says match constraints. What this is gonna do is it's gonna change the width of your view to zero DP, and it's gonna set that programmatically to whatever the constraints happen to be. So in this case, it's the width of the two buttons above it. So then if we come back over to the XML, you can see that this button is now the width of the two buttons above it, and now it all looks pretty uniform. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, it should be smooth sailing for the rest of the series. Well, except for when we gotta do it again in the landscape view, but we'll worry about that when we get there. What I'd like to do now is modify some of the XML code code for our calculator layout. Now to view that code, what we have to do is come over to the far right and then you'll see that we have three buttons here, code, split, and design. Right now we're in design and that'll only show you what the user's gonna see. Now I usually like seeing the XML along with the design, so I'm gonna click the split button and you'll notice we can see the code along with the design. And then within here, if we scroll all the way up to the top of our file, we're looking for this constraint layout tag here. Right now, both the width and the height is set to match parent. Now we want both our width and height to be set to wrap content. So I'm gonna go ahead, type in wrap content. 
And then if we come back over to our design, you can see our buttons kind of shifted around a little bit, but our constraint layout wraps all of the buttons contained within it. So what we have to do now is actually add some constraints to our layout. So I'm gonna go over to the far leftmost bubble here, add a constraint to the far left of the parent, go over to the right, add a constraint to the far right, and then the bottom most part of our constraint layout, I'm gonna constrain that to the bottom part of the parent. And then what we can do is drag this up a little bit so it looks good. And then I'm gonna add one constraint to our input field. I'm gonna go from the bottom of the input field to the top of the constraint layout. And then that should snap flush to the constraint layout, the thing that's holding all of our buttons. Okay, so let's do something fun. Let's add some designs to our buttons. This is kind of getting a little boring. So if we come over to the far left panel, what we're looking for is this resource folder. So let's expand this, and then you should be presented with four folders. In the drawable folder, let's expand that. We're gonna right click on it, hover over new, and we're gonna create a new drawable resource file. What we're gonna be doing in this file is creating a new style for our buttons so they look cool. Let's title this button background, hit enter, and then we should have a new XML file. Within these selector tags, all we have to do is define a new item. This item's gonna be a new shape, and if you come within the attributes of the shape tag, we're gonna define this shape as a rectangle. So within the shape tag, we're gonna define three attributes for a rectangle, a color, a radius for its corners, so they're rounded, and then a stroke that's gonna go around the border of our button. But before we go ahead and define those, we need to add a few colors to our colors resource file. So again, we're gonna come back over to the far left, and you're looking for the values folder this time. Expand this, and we're just gonna double click on colors. Now, you really don't have to add the colors to this file, you can just throw them into the code, but you are supposed to put the colors in here, so I'm gonna do it this way. And I have a bunch of predefined colors for us already, so I'm just gonna copy and paste them into here. Check the description down below so you don't have to type these all out, I'll just put them all there for you guys. But here's the colors that I picked out. This is gonna be for our background. We have a really dark shade of black to a really light shade of gray and a little middle tone. We have a few accent colors here, and the red, so this will be used for our clear button, some green colors here for our equals button, and then this is gonna be for our operations, so like the plus, minus, and divide. I just made those purple. So now that we have our colors defined, we're gonna come back over to our button background, and let's actually define a color for our rectangle. To do this, we're gonna type in solid, and then we're gonna type in Android color, and then we're looking for this color right here, the blue black color. So I'm gonna copy the name of this, come back over to this file and to reference that color in our colors resource file, all we have to do is type in at color forward slash the name of the color that we want. So in our case, it's blue black. So I'm gonna close off this tag. And if we come over to the preview, you can see we have this really deep blue rectangle. So now that we have that, let's round off the corners of our rectangle. So we could do that by typing in corners. And then we're gonna type in Android radius, and I'm gonna give it a radius of 25 DP. Close this tag off, and then if we come over and take a look at our preview, you can see our corners are rounded. And then one last thing, I'm gonna add a stroke around this. So type in stroke, and then this is gonna take in two attributes, the width. So I'm gonna give it a width of 1.5 DP, and then we're gonna define the color for it. So type in Android color, and then we're looking for the tan accent color. So type in at color forward slash tan accent. Close this tag off and then we can take a look at our preview and you can see we have this nice design for our button. Now, how do we go ahead and actually apply this background to each of our buttons? To do that, we're gonna need to modify our themes folder. So again, come back over to the far left panel, expand the themes folder in here, and then we're gonna open up the themes.xml file along with the themes.xml night theme. So we're gonna come back over to the main one here and we're just gonna change the parent of this style tag right here to something other than the material design components. So we're gonna type in theme app compact dot light dot no action bar. So we're gonna highlight this, copy it, and then come over to the night theme and change the parent to the same thing. So once you have that change, we can come over to the main activity.xml file and you'll see all of our buttons changed to a light gray. This is what you wanna see. So if we come over to our buttons, we can actually apply that new button resource that we just created by finding one of our buttons coming into that tag, and all you have to do is type in Android background, and then we're gonna go at drawable, and you're looking for the button background resource that we just created. If you hit enter, you could take a look at the XML, and you can see that we have that drawable resource file applied to the button. But for now, what I'm gonna do is copy this line of code here and go through and add that background to all of our buttons, so I'll be back. Okay, so now that I got all the backgrounds applied to our buttons, 
What I'd like to do now is set up the background for our app. So again, let's come over to the drawable resource file. We're gonna create a new drawable resource and I'm gonna call this app underscore background. Hit enter and we should have a new drawable resource file. And within here, we're gonna define a new item again. This item, it's gonna be a rectangle. So shape, close this tag off, come within the attributes of this. We're gonna define the shape as a rectangle. And within here, we're gonna add a gradient this time. And then we're gonna give the gradient tag three attributes, a start color, which I'm gonna define as this color here. So black start. So copy that name here, type in our at color forward slash the black start, and then hit enter. And we're gonna add in two more attributes. We're gonna add in a center color, which is gonna be the blue black. So copy that name again, come in here at color forward slash blue black. And then we're gonna add in the end color as well which is gonna be the gray end. So copy that name, at color, forward slash gray end, close off this tag, and if we take a look at the preview, you can see we have a nice gradient going from black to a light gray. Now to apply this background to our app, what we have to do is come over to the activity main.xml file. We're gonna scroll all the way up to the top, and then within this topmost tag here, we're gonna come down and then type in Android background, and then we're just gonna apply that drawable resource file that we just created. So if we type in at drawable forward slash app background, we could come over and take a look at the design and it looks a little weird. This is because we never applied an angle at which the gradient is applied at. So if we come back over to the app background, we can add in one more attribute, which is the angle. So type in Android angle, and I'm gonna give it an angle of 45 degrees. Come back over and you can see the app looks a lot better. So now the last thing that I'm gonna do in this video is change the text color of our buttons. So for our text view here, we can type in Android text color. And for this one, I'm gonna give it a color of white. And I'm gonna do the same thing for our input field or the edit text. But for our buttons, I'm gonna give them a different text color. So again, type in Android text color. And I'm gonna give it a text color of this tan accent. So I'm gonna go through, copy this line of code, paste it in for all of our buttons, and then I'll be back. Okay, so now that I have a new text color applied to all of the views, you can see that the app is starting to look much better. All right, before you go, I have a challenge for you. Now there are a few other things that we need to do to make the app look a little bit better, but I'd like to cover that in the next video. But in the meantime, what I'd like you to do is try to figure it out on your own. One thing we have to fix is this warning here for our buttons. You can see that we have a hard-coded string for the text of our buttons. Android Studio despises hard-coded strings like this. That's because when you put an app out onto the App Store, it has no way of converting the text on your app into different languages, unless you use the string resource file. So this is just like our colors. So if we come over to the far left, in the values folder, come down to strings.xml, and within here, I'm gonna paste in a few strings. And then again, these are just gonna be in the description so you don't have to type these all out. But the challenge for you is to apply each of these strings to their corresponding button. And then what I'd like you to do is figure out how to add a new background for the clear button. So I'll pull up the calculator again. For the clear button, the equals button and the divide, multiply, minus, and plus button. So they're all different colors. You guys have everything you need to figure this out. Let me know down in the comments though if you need some hints. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.